everyone welcome back to my channel in today's video i'm going to share with you our trying to conceive journey with baby number two before i get into the video i just wanted to say um i know that these sort of videos can be a bit triggering for some people who may have been um ttc for a really long time um, and if that's you, like, I just wanted to say I'm so sorry and I really hope that you get your positive really, really soon. Um, I'm simply just sharing my journey and I know obviously there's going to be people out there who get pregnant way quicker than me or way later than me. It's just how it is. Um, so yeah, if these videos are triggering, probably don't watch. Um, but yeah, I'm just sharing my experience. Okay, let's get into the video. So first, I just wanted to start off by sort of explaining um, like when we started to conceive um, and sort of like roughly how that process went. Um, I'll also put in here there is a miscarriage. Um, I do talk about a miscarriage. So if that is again triggering for you, probably click out of this video. So our TTC journey. So this baby was definitely planned. Um, unlike Lincoln, our first baby, he was sort of like a happy surprise. Um, he wasn't like unplanned in a way, but we sort of like, we knew we wanted to have kids soon, but like it just sort of happened. Yeah, when we weren't expecting it, which was a absolute blessing. This time around, um, we knew we wanted them close in age. So we did start trying when Lincoln was around seven months old. At this time, I was still breastfeeding him. So I did start doing ovulation tests at that time and around six months, when he was six months, I started using the little cheapy Amazon ovulation tests, um, which I'll show you in a second. Um, but I never really got a positive. They were all really, really faint. They never really got dark. Um, and I did that for a few months, even though we were trying. Um, I feel like I just maybe wasn't ovulating because... I was still breastfeeding. Um, I know, yeah, it can be, breastfeeding can be a form of protection um, and contraception. Um, but yeah, so it did take us around four months to get pregnant. Um, we ended up getting pregnant in March of this year, 2022. Um, but unfortunately we did have a miscarriage a week and a half after we found out. So yeah, we miscarried sort of the end of March. Um, and yeah, that was my first miscarriage. So that was pretty rough. Um, obviously no one, I mean, unless you've sort of, I guess maybe if you've had miscarriages before you kind of, you anticipate them, but like when you see the positive pregnancy test, you're not automatically thinking miscarriage. Well, I wasn't anyway. Um, I was really excited and like, I know again, four months is not even that long, but like when you've been trying, um, and you finally see that result, you're like, oh my God, yes. Um, and then you find out it's a miscarriage. It's just kind of like, oh, we have to start all over again. So yeah, it was, it was a pretty hard couple of weeks to process it. Um, but now like we've completely processed it. Like I'm okay. Um, I sort of just like, I like to look at it like as everything happens for a reason, like it just wasn't our timing. Um, and now obviously we are blessed with another baby. Um, so yeah. And then after that, we started trying again. Um, they basically said, as soon as my period comes back, you can start again um, after the miscarriage. I had like a normal miscarriage, like I didn't have to have a DNC or anything. It happened quite early, so my body passed through it all. Um, and then, yeah, we were just told to wait until the period and then we could start trying again. So after that, it took us around three months after the miscarriage to fall pregnant with this baby. Um, so yeah, if you include the miscarriage, it took around six months for us to fall pregnant. Um, yeah, it was a couple of cycles after that. I got my period back that we finally conceived again. Um, so yeah. And then the, I want to talk about my cycle on the cycle that we conceived. So before that cycle, like all the cycles before, I wasn't really tracking my ovulation. 
in my head it was just like a thing that was just like daunting to do and like it just I didn't want it to be a chore and I didn't want to like obsess over the ovulation um yeah it just kind of seemed tedious to me so I never really did it properly I take strips every now and then but I never like sort of tracked it down to the T to the like you know and compared the what are they called the lines um, until the cycle that we conceived this baby. <laughs> it had been a while um, conceiving and after the miscarriage, I was really like determined more than ever to fall pregnant again. Um, so yeah, I did. I watched a lot of these videos on YouTube, how to conceive after miscarriage, blah, blah, blah. Um, and everyone was saying they just like track, write everything down in a book and stick all the little tests in there and track your ovulation because I was using an app I'm sure everyone uses an app for their ovulation when you're trying to conceive but the apps are never correct so it was telling me that I was ovulating on day 12 or something um and so we'd have we'd like do the deed <laughs> um really early in the cycle like from days 10 to like 12 or 13 um, or even a little bit earlier um, and then I feel like we were just missing that window um, so when I started actually tracking it properly I found out that I was ovulating on day 14 so yeah it definitely pays if you do want to try and get pregnant really quickly um, it pays to sort of do this method um, even though it can be a bit tedious um, it's it worked for us the first time we did it so yeah so now i will show you my ovulation tracking that i did so i just put it in this little notebook um and i'll show you it here so you can see i sort of just did down here cycle day um so the day one is the first day of your period and then the date next to it then the time the time was just for when I was taking the strips, like testing for my ovulation. Then the P here with the little drops is just my period days. Then you've got the LH test. Um, and then next to the test, I'd write L, H or P. So L is low, H is high and P is peak ovulation so peak is when you're ovulating and like that's or you're right about to ovulate and that's when you should be having sex um and then yeah the little love hearts on the very end are just the days we did have Alrighty, here is a closer look at my ovulation tracking so again yeah you can see the start date for this cycle where we conceived was the 20th of june 2022 um, and I started taking the ovulation tests at around nine, cycle day nine. So you can see here pretty much up until day 12 that they are very low. Um, so this here is the control line on the right and the left is the test line. So you can see like these are pretty similar. Like this one, I feel like it starts to get a little bit darker on day 12, but it's still not as dark as the control line. Um, and then on day 13, it starts to get darker. So I feel like day 13, like even the PM1, it is quite dark. Like I would say it's as dark as the control line. So yeah, I actually, this smiley face here is when I did a clear blue. So I did, I used all these cheap ones at the start um, just because I didn't want to waste money on the expensive digital ovulations. Um, so I actually did get my first peak confirmed by a digital ovulation test at 9 p.m. on cycle day 13. And then that's what it looks like on the cheap ovulation test so yeah it's clearly like as dark as that line if not a little bit darker so yeah we had um we had intercourse on that day when as soon as i got the peak and then the next morning i took one at 8 30 a.m and you can see it's even darker so again it's peak 
Then 9 p.m. I took another one and it's still very dark and I've written peak. So we had intercourse again two more times on that ovulation day. Um, so basically with the ovulation test, they say as soon as you get peak, you're going to ovulate 12, I think it's 12 to 36 hours after your first peak. So I got my peak on day 13 in the evening. So that would mean I definitely ovulated um, on day 14, um, possibly in the night time. Um, so yeah, we had sex three times leading up and during. And then again on day 15, I took one really early in the morning, my first morning urine at 6.30. And you can see that the line is a little bit darker, but it's still as dark. It's still as dark as the control line. So I've written high, whereas the days before when it was peak, my test line was actually darker than the control line. So it's definitely peak on day 14. Then again, day 15, I took one at 7.30 p.m. And you can see that the, the test line is significantly lighter. So my um, LH was definitely starting to drop um, the night after the peak. So, well, actually two nights after the peak because I got my first peak on day 13 at 9 p.m. So yeah, I would have definitely ovulated on day 14. And then again, I tested cycle day 16 at 6 a.m. And it's, yeah, very light. So it's definitely not a positive test. So that is our ovulation tracking for our month that we conceived. As you can see, it's really hard, like... I feel like if you're just looking at them every day and then throwing them away, it's really easy to be like, oh yeah, it's dark, it's a it's a high test or I'm about to ovulate. Um, it's not until you put them against each other in like a book like this that you can really see, yeah, like it's way darker than the control line, so it's definitely peak. Um, yeah, so I really recommend if you're trying to conceive, do this. It is tedious. Um, you do have to make sure you hold your urine um, for like three or four hours before you test. Um, so what I do is I test first thing in the morning with my first morning urine, and then I test again um, at night and just hold my urine and not drink a lot of water before I did the test. Um, yeah, it also depends on your cycle. Like if you have a normal sort of cycle like me, mine's like 28 days, um, then I would really start doing two tests a day at around like 12 or 11 just to be safe. Cycles day, cycle day 11 or 12. Um, you can see before that they were really low. I was just doing one test a day, but it can really change a lot. And if you only test once a day, you can miss that peak period and it could start to drop. So yeah, it is important to test twice a day when, you, when you're close to your ovulation or you think you're close to your ovulation um, and just get a book like this or stick them down next to each other just so you can compare and really see when you're ovulating. Um, especially if you don't want to use the digital test because they are super expensive. I literally only used one per cycle because they were so expensive. Um, these are just the um, Pregmate ovulation tests off Amazon. I will link them in the, the description. But yeah, they come in a massive pack and yeah, you can just use, you can test multiple times a day and it's a cheaper way to do it. So I'll move on now to my pregnancy test line progression. I love looking at these. I don't know what it is. I just, yeah, it's just, it's so cool to see the line darken, especially this time that cycle, because we'd had the miscarriage, I definitely wanted to keep testing beyond the first positive test. Um, so I will show you guys my line progression. I got my first um, positive at 9DPO. Um, if you haven't seen my um, pregnancy reaction video, I'll link it up here for you and in the, the description. Um, I swear I saw a line at 9DPO. I showed, I feel, feel like I showed Ryan and he was like, no, it's not there. Um, 
and then I tested again the next morning and it was definitely there so I will show you guys now I tested from 8 DPO to 17 DPO um, and then yeah the line was just way darker than the control line so I stopped testing okay so these are all my pregnancy tests that I took I used the first response um, the first response pink test <laughs> I don't know I'm pretty sure that's all they are um, so I started testing from 8 DPO as you can see there's nothing there um, definitely a negative then 9 DPO I tested in the morning and I also tested at night and this is where I in the video swear I saw a positive um, now that it's dried, I feel like you definitely can see if it wants to focus. Let's put it here. I don't know if you guys can see that, but I can definitely see a faint line right there. Then the next day, 10 DPO, I feel like it is definitely clear that it is positive. 12 13 14 and it goes all the way down to 17 so yeah 14 is obviously the day that my period was meant to come that one's gone a bit funny and then yeah after 14 i feel like even 15 dpo the test line is way darker than the control line and it just sort of stayed the same it got like slightly darker here um, but I feel like once you've got your like die stealer, they call it, where the control line is, the test line is darker than the control line. It's like pretty much like that's it. Like you, there's no point testing anymore. So yeah, that is my line progression. And that is it for today's video. If you did enjoy, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and please subscribe. I upload videos every week and I will see you in my next video. Bye.